Our pace of living leaves us little time for leisure. Our program will give you a chance to experience the fascinating world of traveling, extreme adventures, hunting and fishing. Each week we will take you to the most beautiful places of Kazakhstan. In the distant past, even a skillful and experienced hunter could walk no further than 40 kilometers away from home. A neighboring district would seem the edge of the world, and hunting there would be a new exciting experience. However, in the recent decades, hunting across long distances has become something we are not surprised because of either long hunting paths or due to the fact that hunting has become an entertaining activity at a global scale. Hunting has occupied a niche in the world tourism industry. At the world tourism trade, hundreds of thousands of hunting licenses are sold every year for many billions of dollars, the money that goes to maintain game reserves. In 2014, more than 300 foreign hunters visited Kazakhstan and 20 Kazakhstani hunters went abroad to hunt. Today we travel to Germany to take part in a collective hunt organized by the Carl Zeiss Corporation for journalists and hunting experts. 60 guests from 18 different countries have visited the headquarters of the company in Wetzlar. It's wet and cloudy in Frankfurt today. From the airport, we are going to get to Wetzlar, where there's the main production of the Zeiss company, by car. It will take about one hour. There is slit in Frankfurt and it's very wet. We are transferred from the airport to the headquarter in Wetzlar in the company car and this takes us about one hour. Modern Frankfurt shines with tall buildings built from glass and concrete. In contrast, the architecture of Wetzlar represents the Gothic traditions of the German style Fachwerk. To us, Wetzlar is a province, the administrative center of the Middle Gessen lands. We thought we would be able to compare it to the Balkhash region in Kazakhstan, but small in size. On the contrary, Wetzlar is called the capital of optics produce in Germany. Most of the company personnel are based in the town, enjoying all the facilities of a large city. A foreign visitor can only see what the German province is like only when they drive past nice village German houses across well-looked-after farm fields and over the bridge over the river Lan, where 15 centuries ago ancient Roman merchants used to carry goods from Mesopotamia to Antwerp. When you have a look at the spiels of the monastery of St. Mary, where the first Christians found a refuge from barbaric tribes, you start to understand what the German province is like. We can hear ducks quaking from our hotel rooms. The town is situated at the bank of the river Lan, the inflow of the rain. Most of the industrial regions are covered with thick woods where there is plenty of game. We take a coach from Wurzla to another town, Laubach, from 20 kilometers of which there is a game reserve where we are going to hunt. But first of all, we need to get through the shooting test to check the gun's optics. At the same time, we have an opportunity to shoot at different distances. To hire the guns and take part in the hunt, one needs to get this German hunting ticket and the permission to carry a gun. This has been done beforehand. We show the necessary documents to arrange the hunting license. From now on, we are responsible for the safety of the guns. Maxim puts his signature three times to get Mosa M12 caliber 308 with aiming Terra 3X model 414 by 15. This aiming has been designed specially for chasing hunters. It is easily modified with a wide range, allowing the hunter to take aim while moving, which is crucial when chasing the game in a wood or forest where the game moves fast and the hunter has only few seconds to aim. We test the guns at a distance of 100 and 300 meters. Moser M12 proves to be a good gun. 
Later on, we have barbecue in the open air and have a rest. Breakfast is served at 7 a.m. Then a bus takes us to the hunting site. The bus trip takes about 12 minutes. Before the hunt, the hunters are instructed and split into groups of five that are coordinated by one group leader. The hunting rules are strict. Hunting in the German game reserves is mainly selective. The species of reproductive age that have the first class trophy quality are not allowed to hunt for to prevent them from disappearing. Such male species should breed for as long as possible and when they get too old for that, they are allowed to be hunted for at a high price. Collective hunting by chasing is not as expensive as trophy hunting, but it has a number of limitations. The hunter is not allowed to shoot the dominant alpha males, which are usually aging herd leaders that form the social structure of the herd. If they die, the existence of the whole herd may be under threat. We are only allowed to hunt for young species of male red deers whose antlers have fewer than three horn branches. If the male red deer has more than three horn branches, it is not allowed to hunt for it as it is a precious sample for reproduction. The male species of the roe deer are not allowed to be hunted either. To control the population, only young females are shot. Probably the most desired trophy for most of the participants is the European mouflon. Mouflons belong to the same class as Kazakhstani ibexes. Usually, hunters are allowed to hunt only male mouflons no older than 4 years old. Highly ranked males can only be hunted when they do not take part in the rut and the mating season. Identifying the age of the mouflon is not easy, therefore an experienced huntsman usually accompanies the hunters when hunting for mouflons. When hunting in groups, a huntsman doesn't accompany each individual hunter, of course. They remain in their positions and are in charge of everything they are doing themselves. In case of violation of rules, the hunter will have to pay a fine. Swine that feed their piglets are not the target either, but if the swine is alone, it is allowed to be shot. The targets for hunting are also foxes, badgers and raccoon dogs. Horde blowing signals the beginning of the hunt and we take the positions. Our group leader Alexander will show us my position and the sector for shooting. On the first day, Maxim gets the position on the observation tower. I'm ready at the position at the observation tower, waiting for the mouflons, wild boars, red deers and roe deers to show up. We hear the shooting from everywhere. Among the trees we see silhouettes of red deers. The process of hunting is recorded with video cameras. We've started shooting. The shooting is everywhere here. Maxim picks the gun and aims at the deers. At least one of them is a plausible target for hunting that will make any hunter proud. The temptation to shoot is high, but we must remember that we must not shoot such species. We have just seen a large herd of deers run by. One of them is a gold medal trophy one. There were a few ones that are younger. They ran in 70 meters from us. I would have been able to make an accurate shot. And just to spite us, the largest deer stopped for a little while as if it had wanted to tease us. But we need to remember about the huge fine we would have paid in this situation. 
We hesitate for a moment. Can we shoot the other two smaller males or not? And then we see a roe deer. The male roe deers have recently dropped their antlers and it is not easy to differentiate them from females. I have shot a roe deer. Within an hour, we see a few red deer females with their young. We don't feel like shooting now. The hunting time is up at 1 pm. By this time, Maxim has shot only one roe deer female. I didn't want to return with no game. And at the same time, I didn't break the rules. The hunting took place on the principle one shot, one trophy. On the next day we have a position below. We have a few wooden poles dug into the ground we should stand by. Today is the second day of the hunt. It's raining and this is what my position looks like. We are surrounded by thick forest. Position number four. It rains and it seems we won't be able to succeed in hunting on such a day. But soon we notice a silhouette of an animal and that is a huge boar. It would have been silly to miss this chance. By the sound of the shot we can judge that it has been an accurate shot, but the boar disappears in the wood. That's where the boar has run away. After some time, over the slope, we see a herd of mouflons run by. We won't have a second chance, and a shot is made. The bullet finds its aim, and the animal falls over. But we see something else glimpse behind the short animal. Стоял самец муфлона, а в момент выстрела сзади подбежала самка. At the moment of shooting, the male mouflon was standing at the place, and behind it was a female mouflon, and the shot hit the male and killed the female. I have accidentally broken the rule. We are not allowed to shoot the females. This was unintended. Let's see how the organizers will react to this. Upon the end of the hunt, the section of the hunting site should be checked. The hunters check the area with Jagd, Welsh and Fox Terriers to search for the trophy. The Mouflon is a precious trophy on the hunting market and probably we will be charged for the unintended slaughtering of the female Mouflon. But the organizers of the hunt understood our case and the accidental nature of the shot and do not charge us for that. The area of the game reserve is 4000 hectares. Every year, two day intense collective hunting is held twice a year. In the rest time, the animals are not disturbed here and they graze peacefully in the woods. The hunt is over and the long way back home awaits us. It would be great to see such game reserves organizing similar tours in Kazakhstan.